Did you know? 80% of consumers begin their research online when searching for a product or service. 94% of consumers will judge an organization by its digital presence. Hi, my name is Jessica Sheely, founder and CEO of GPD Creative Agency. GPD is an award-winning creative agency that assists organizations to create meaningful and memorable digital marketing strategies. What makes GPD different? Our team of creative geniuses who are experts in digital emotional intelligence and digital storytelling. Creating content that captures, connects, and closes the deal for your buyer. Branding is not just about your company logo, fonts, or colors. It's a strategic effort to establish a desired perception of your company within the minds of potential customers. Since 2015, GPD has supported hundreds of organizations within our global footprint through core competencies such as brand strategy, user experience and website design, and video production. In addition, GPD has collaborated with several organizations, including Fifth Third Bank and the City of Cincinnati, to provide premier digital marketing services to minority-owned businesses, further enhancing the brand presence of diverse suppliers in Ohio's ecosystem. To learn more about our organization, be sure to visit us online at www.createwithgpd.com. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to part two, <laughs> the second week of our self-improvement strategies for entrepreneurs series. I am so delighted to be back with you all yet another week. I hope everyone's week has been going well. It is Friday Eve, and so for that, we are thankful but we are not going to hold you long per usual. We want to get right into it. So what I would like to do is first let you know what we're talking about this evening. It is all about systems and organizations. And tonight we have a wonderful, wonderful guest who is a small business owner, but she is very passionate about being organized, decluttering, she and I have worked together, and I'm thrilled to bring her back for the third year, um, Miss Ashlea Chisley. Yay! So I'm going to bring her to the stage, and while doing so, I am going to share with you a little bit more about her by reading her bio. So um, at a young age, she knew that there was something special about her and, and her innate ability to want to create order whether that be consciously or subconsciously. And she has always loved to sort, assemble, and see how things can be transformed with even the smallest of organizational items like bins, baskets, shelving, you name it. So having been raised by her grandparents, Ashlea saw the accumulation of items over time. And I can totally relate to that with older parents. Um, and she remember felt being she remembered the feeling of being overwhelmed um, but and excited when her grandparents would order items that needed to be put together um, and just feeling like it was her birthday or Christmas came early. So package after package would be delivered and there would be, um, she would be more than happy to assist and sort in place whatever was in the box. Being diagnosed with Crohn's disease at a tender age and being blessed to see 34, um, has been a humbling experience for Ashley, to say the least. Um, she's always been a person that has been happy to assist others in any way possible. And like I said, I can totally attest to that. Um, over the past four years, she's been determined to walk in her purpose. And she is beyond fortunate to have a close group of friends and family that have always spoken life into her. She is grateful for having earned her certificate and becoming a professional organizer um, so that she can share her passion with others, helping to transform their homes and lives, which is both personally and spiritually rewarding for her. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I please welcome Miss Ashley Chisley 
small business owner at Simplistic Touch LLC. How are you doing this evening, Ashley? Hello, hello. I'm good. I'm good. Good, good. Good, good, good. So yes, you and I was chatting a little bit before we went live. Yes. Talking about how September is Septembering. <laughs> and, you know, we are in the final month of the third quarter. Yes. We so are cool. heading in. It's crazy how fast this year has flown yes. by. Um, we are heading into fourth quarter, the last three months of 2023. And um, just every September, I think it's so fitting for us to come together, not only to honor self-improvement month, but to be a guiding light for entrepreneurs and professionals for ending the year strong. Yes. So I love celebrating this yes. month. And thank you so much again for your yes and your willingness to speak with entrepreneurs and professionals and provide tips with, along with your expertise on how we can get our life and become more organized. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I know you have some things that you want to share with the folks tonight. But before we do that, I definitely want to show a quote that I found. I actually found it on IG and I feel like um, it's so fitting as it sets the tone for what we will be talking about this evening. It says to invest in your room. And when I think about it, it's beyond just your bedroom. I will change that out to any room in my house, um, even changing it to invest in your space um, because it really is your sanctuary. And unconsciously, our space has tremendous influence on our mental health. So living in a messy and disorganized space will likely make you feel overwhelmed and frustrated. It can lower your vibration and make you feel anxious. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So yes. like I said, I think that was a wonderful place to start. Ashley, I remember you telling me a story about um, being a newlywed and coming back <laughs> with so many boxes in your home yes. and how that made you feel anxious yes. and overwhelmed. So I know you can relate to it. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit more about the importance of being organized and decluttering um, for entrepreneurs and just in general. Absolutely. Um, going back to what you said, it's so funny because... Um, also often life, like you said, is just be life and sometimes, yeah. and mm -hmm. we don't realize how much stuff we can accumulate over just a small amount of time. It doesn't even have to be a, a large time frame, but sometimes it could be just a week or two weeks coming in out of the door, you know, your busy lifestyle. So things sometimes fall to the wayside. So it's easy to kind of you know, let things kind of fall. Um, so it's good to have order and establish healthy routines um, in your day to day life so that you can be more productive, which is why I got into organizing. Um, when I was raising my grandparents, you know, like I, like you stated, you do mm -hmm. accumulate a lot of things being with older people and they collect a lot of things. And so when I was living with my grandparents, you know, of course, that that is their home. So my room was really like my own space that I felt like I had full control over. You know what I yes. mean? Yes. So that is kind of where it kind of came into. I'm like, okay, well, if this is the only place that I can kind of do my thing in and actually feel at peace, you know, walking yes. through the house, then absolutely this is where I need to spend my time and make sure that it is um, a peaceful place. Um, that I can operate freely, um, not have to look for things or uh, feel overwhelmed. Um, yeah. So a lot of times people think that organizing is in relation to cleaning, where that is more so when you're dealing with um, getting rid, getting rid of dirt and debris with chemicals and stuff like that. But with organizing, you are arranging items in a systematic way. You're creating mm -hmm. order. Um, and so I always say, you know, make sure that you have functional systems, which is like a combination um, or operation that's applied to perform or lead to other operations. So me going into someone's um, home and decluttering that process is physically getting rid of items that are not needed or not serving a purpose and um, maybe repurposing 
uh, items that you might have in other areas of your home that could be more beneficial in another space um, that you might not be getting the most use out of in another space or something yeah. like that. Um, so yes. Woo, so wait, we got a we got a pause right there because you just, you just downloaded a lot, and I'm like, my mind is just going, going, going for you. So, but I think one of the things that I really want to call out based on what you said is the emotional and mental connection mm -hmm. that comes with having an organized and or disorganized space. Absolutely. And when, as you were sharing that, it made me think of my parents. So you were raised with your grandparents. Um, I was raised with my parents that are of an older generation, an mm -hmm. aging generation. And oftentimes I remember hearing my mom say, no, you can't throw that away. Like <laughs> it could be something simple. I mean, if we could, listen, I'm yes. not trying to call nobody out, but no. and if you went to my we love y'all, <laughs> we're not watching this, so I think we're okay. Right. But on the third floor, it's like you'll find yeah. stuff mm -hmm. from my first grade schooling all yeah. the way up until college, and maybe even before that. And it's like it just feels so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. How do you, how would you suggest or recommend someone who has that emotional attachment to things that sentimental value yes. Yes. that is not really serving a purpose? Mm -hmm. How do they break through that mental um, battle that I, I consider it a mental battle yeah. of um letting think letting the thing go how mm -hmm. would you how what would you recommend for someone like that honestly it is going to be hard regardless how you try to break it down mm -hmm. when you are emotionally invested into an item um that it's harder to part ways from and that's kind of what makes it hard for clients to declutter and get rid of things because either they want to hold on to it um, because of the sentimental value, or they feel that, oh, I'll need that one day. It'll, it'll, it will come of use, you I've know, heard that um, <laughs> but most of the time it does not. So in my realm, what I say is I try to practice for every one or two items that I'm bringing into the house. I try to take out mm. uh, one or two items, maybe an additional item, depending on how big or small, if we want to get technical with mm -hmm. the item. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, it is hard to part from things emotionally, but you have to, you have to ask yourself at the end of the day, how serious are you about getting organized? Yeah. How serious are you about your mental space and freedom? How serious are you about investing in your time and, um, being able to enjoy life more rather than looking for things or trying to figure out what you need to do next because you don't have something in place like a routine or a healthy habit. So yeah. um, you just have to ask yourself that tough question. And, and it really just breaks down to just making that decision. Um, yeah. It's never going to be easy, of course, because it's, it's sentimental to you. But at the end of the day, if you're, ultimate goal is to have a non overwhelming life in a room or a space and not feel overwhelmed. Um, then you just need to make that decision and decide if you want to get rid of it. And sometimes you can't just think about the monetary aspect of items. Like if you do have an item and it's not used to you anymore, Think about all of the other people. Life is hard right now. So think about all the other people that you could be blessing with the things that are just collecting dust. It could be things that still have tags on it, still in the boxes. You know what I mean? Or not rarely used items. But there's so many people that could use our unused or rarely used items. So I always say, think about the bigger picture and you just have to make that tough decision at the end of the day on how serious and how motivated and invested you are into getting organized. I couldn't agree. It's, it's more. a hard truth, but it but, is a hard truth, it but is what it is. you put it so eloquently. 
I just have to say, ladies and gentlemen, Sada Ma'at has entered the room. Yes! <laughs> That's my baby girl. Hi, baby. So listen, we are at home. You know, we're doing our thing and it's real. So I'm just going to keep it real. <laughs> Your stuff in the background. That's baby girl. She minding her business. We're going to mind our own business <laughs> over here. Okay. So, but I agree with what you said wholeheartedly. Um, at the base of it, it's all about making a decision. And um, I think, especially for entrepreneurs, we can experience um, decision fatigue. And I, I'll speak for myself. I often experience decision fatigue, mm -hmm. which is, mm -hmm. you know, getting worn out basically from making decision after decision after decision. Yep. And that comes along with the territory of being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that the end result is worth it, especially when it comes to being organized and cleaning up your space. Yes. It is so worth it. I can personally attest to how I feel when I have a disorganized um, work environment mm -hmm. as opposed to just taking some time each day to file papers right. or um, put, you know, sort through papers. We get so much mail. It's like, I can't keep up with it. But when I take the time to go through it and mm -hmm. either put it in a basket that's for the shreds or throw it away, you yeah. just, I just feel so much lighter mentally and even physically yeah. once I've taken the time to invest yeah. in in my space and it's those small tasks that lead up to the over to the to the big to the bigger picture you know what i mean um so doing if sometimes people get overwhelmed with like you said just making the decision to have to make the list or do the task but like i said making the decision to do that and then just fine tuning schedule it out sometimes you maybe only have 20 or 30 minutes in a week to apply to doing some of the tasks that you need to do. That's fine. As long as you are moving towards, you know, your end goal and progressing, that's all that matter. I feel like people need to focus more on celebrating all of your wins rather than, you know, thinking about, oh my gosh, I still have this long list of things to do, you know? <laughs> Sometimes we put I more stress on ourselves than we need to. Yes. And like you said, these are already stressful times. So yes. we don't need to add any additional stress yes. to ourselves. Sometimes people are not realistic with themselves because mm -hmm. when you walk into a space, let's say a kitchen, a mom or a wife, you walk into the kitchen and you see a sink full of dishes, you are automatically turned off. You're like, oh, I don't want to do this. Or, you know, it's like, oh, gosh. So, <laughs> you know, having a, a, a healthy routine, like for me, um, if I'm doing the cooking in the house, then my husband will do the dishes. We might tag team when it comes to the dishwasher or something like that. But that's that's our routine, whether than it being piled on to one person or, you know, it being overwhelming for somebody. So when you establish those small routines, it works out in the long run for you. Yes, I think that's a critical point. And something that you also mentioned, too, about routines is having a partner or in business, having your team, mm -hmm. um, what would you suggest or what would you recommend for individuals that need help in actually establishing that routine? Where would, where should they start? Mm -hmm. So I would say that you need to be intentional. You need to be consistent, prioritize and plan ahead. Um, when you go into the grocery store and you have your list of groceries that you need, first off, you're going to make your list to go to the grocery store. We don't ever want to go to the grocery store without a list. Because or hungry. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> then we're walking through all the aisles. We're picking up things that we don't need. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And so when you have your list, it kind of keeps you in that mindset of, no, okay, this is what I need to do and keeps you on, on track. So I want to share that. So, yes, <laughs> definitely planning ahead. Yes. And, you know, you shared some tips as well um, earlier this week on LinkedIn is where I saw it about the benefits and the stats of organizing. Um, yes. I'm going to pull it up. But is there anything okay. specifically that you want to call out from from that information that you shared? Um. 
Not necessarily. I feel like they were all really great tips. Um, what I do want to say is that it can be overwhelming. So it's important to find balance and try not to overwhelm yourself when you have a list of tasks that you need to tackle. Um, what I do want to push, because a lot of people get so excited when they're getting organized, they're excited about the bins and the labels and the containers, and, and it's like, oh, yay, pretty. And that's great, right? But if you have these items and you don't have the mental mindset to put an item back where it needs to go when you're finished using it, then you are basically going to continue in the same cycle. You're going to have these great organizing products that have now not, they're not useful because they're not being used at their best potential. Um, so a lot of times people get so held up on the bins and containers, but it's more so of a mindset of you getting your healthy routine um, and process down that best works for you and your family, whether that's using chore charts, digital um, reminders or things like that. Um, I think that is, go ahead. So, no, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to cut you off, but one thing that you mentioned is you know, not getting um, caught up in all of the flash of organizing trinkets or, yeah. you know, um, additional things that are to help you with organizing that could potentially become another added addition to yes. this organization and yes. clutter. Yes. And, um, you know, again, I would just go back to what you've already stated of planning ahead and asking the question, how am I going to utilize this item that I'm bringing in to help me stay organized? Right. right. Because at the end of the day, you are buying all these products and then they are just being stacked up <laughs> because we don't know how you don't know how to utilize them yeah. to make them work best for you in whatever space. So, yeah. Yes. Well, we are rounding out our time for this evening. Is there anything else that you would like to share with the people when it comes to staying organized and um, decluttering your space? Um, so I have a couple takeaways. Um, so I just want to reiterate that organizing is a mindset it, and a process. It requires patience, endurance, and a willingness to grow. Um, if you practice decluttering regularly, it will save you time in the long run. Um, maybe you need to revamp some of your systems if there have been life changes um, happening. Maybe you had a baby. Maybe you did some construction to your home, and, or maybe you're going to reuse a, a reuse a room in your home for um, another purpose than it was before. Um, so revamping your systems when needed. Um, make sure that people in your home are all on board to being organized and having an organizer within their home, um, utilizing labels. A lot of times people don't want to use labels, but it's beneficial because when you are starting out with the system, it is training your mat, training your mind to know, okay, this is where this item needs to go rather than just guessing and, and just putting it wherever you want to go. And then we're back to square one. So um, that's why it's so important to, come up with a healthy routine. Um, write it down, schedule it, and do it. Those are, that is like my motto. Um, and then don't be afraid, um, not be afraid, don't be hard on yourself. Make sure that you appreciate all of the small wins, um, even if they feel small to you. Um, so celebrate yourself. Whatever progress you are making towards your goal, that is awesome. Those are excellent, excellent takeaways. I hope our audience captured all of those. If not, you can always check out the replay. Ashley, thank you so much for joining no us. Again. Thank you. Thank you. Please, please, please tell the people where they can find you online and how they can connect with you if they're interested in utilizing your services. Yes, ma'am. So I am on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of the social medias. I do have a TikTok, but I'm not quite there yet. So... <laughs> 
working on that. Um, oh, but it is at, of course. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so I am at Simplistic Touch LLC or at Simplistic Touch. Um, you can email me or uh, DM me, whatever. Um, I'm on all the social media platforms. My website is www.simplistictouch.com. Um, and since we are actually going into the fourth quarter, I will just say this for all the people that are on now and will see this. Simplistic Touch has just been such a blessing to other people. Um, blessings have just been overflowing. So our prices will be um, increasing it starting January. Um, I will be making an announcement in October, um, that the start of the fourth quarter. So, uh, just giving you a heads up. Thank you so much to all of my clients and potential clients. So yes, stay I organized. It. Listen, stay organized. <laughs> and did you hear that? That's the sound of the okay. price going up. Okay. <laughs> Do your thing, Black woman. Do your thing. I'm so happy and proud for you. Thank and you. thank you so thank much you. for tuning in. Um, Anthony says, great information and insight. We appreciate you joining us live. Thank and you. And feel free to share your own tips with us on how you stay organized and the impact of organization on your mental health. Yes. Um, again, everyone, it's your girl, Jessica Renee with GPD Creative Agency. Thank you for being a part of our four part webinar series in September as we focus on self improvement strategies for entrepreneurs. Be sure to tune in next week as we're talking about all things spirituality with the Queen Aziza Nubia. And um, you all will be in for a treat yet again as you have been these past two weeks now. So, again, Ashley, thank you so much for joining. And that's it. It's a wrap. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.